Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, O God, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God my saviour and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Hallelujah. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Oh, friends, I don't know about you, but this is my prayer. This has always been my prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't ever cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Friends, there is coming a time. There is coming a time when the true disciples of Jesus Christ must rise up and take their place. Friends, the church is is lukewarm. It's lukewarm as it was in the days of the Laodicean church. Everyone thinks they've got everything they need. Everyone thinks that they're blessed and comfortable and everything's good and they're rich. But spiritually, friends, they are poor. They're poor, they're hungry, they're starving. They're spiritually destitute, not really following after the ways of the Lord. They go to church on Sunday, then they go home and they switch on the television. They switch on the television, friends. In the evening, they drink a bottle of wine. They swear. They blaspheme. They go out drinking. They go out to the nightclubs. There's a hedonistic lifestyle amongst many who profess to be saints. And the Lord says, this is wretched. This is blind. This is poor. And the tragedy is, friends, the Lord says it's so horrible, it's so not one way or the other that he, he has to spit it out. He has to spit us out of his mouth if we're neither one way or the other. He would rather, you see, that we were hot or just cold. But he doesn't want us in between, sitting on the fence. Friends, there is coming a day. I can feel it, friends, and I hope you can feel it too. There is coming a day. The Lord is preparing. The Lord is preparing. He's preparing, friends. The Lord is preparing. The clouds, the clouds, they are moving faster. They are moving faster and they are swirling in the heavenly realm. Oh, friends. Oh, friends. The trumpets are ready to be blown. Trumpets have already been blown. There is a sound in the heavenly realm today. The trumpets are sounding, but still the church is so asleep. The church is entertaining itself, and we listen to sermons, and we get all blessed, and we say, wasn't I blessed? Did you get blessed? But it's not about that, friends. 
It's about blessing the Lord. It's about getting onto our faces before the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about falling prostrate before him. It's about begging him with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls. It's about giving up our all. It's about laying it all down. Laying everything down for the cause of Christ. He's saying, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. I'll become a martyr for thee, if necessary. Friends, the early disciples, they said that they would... They, would seek him, they were seeking martyrdom, that they would gain a better resurrection. Our friends, we're so uh, naturally minded, but the Lord wants to implant in us a spiritual mind, a spiritual heart, that when we wake up in the morning, all we're thinking about is the Lord. All we're craving after is the Lord's presence. Can you feel his presence, friends? Oh, friends, it's so wonderful to be in his presence. It's so wonderful to be in standing inside the fire of his holy presence. He burns away all the sin. He burns away all the evil. And then we rejoice together with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you feel his holy angels today, friends? Can you feel his holy angels today, friends? Hallelujah. The Lord is going to descend, friends. The Lord is going to descend and the time is near. The time is near. A few years back, I was walking down by the harbour in the town that I used to live in. And I was walking with my wife and we were just talking about stuff. I can't remember what we were talking about. And all of a sudden, the word parousa came into my mind. And I didn't know what that word meant. Turns out it was a Greek word, referencing the coming of the Lord. And as I was walking along that harbour, friends, the atmosphere suddenly changed. And I was, whoa, Jesus is coming. But it wasn't just a mental thought. It was a feeling. The atmosphere changed and I was taken aback. And all I could hear was this word, parousa. And I went home and I looked the word up on the internet. And immediately I saw what it meant. And it was about the coming of the Lord. Friends, he is warning us. He is warning us. Jesus is coming. And will we be ready? Will we be ready? Or will we be like those tragic virgins who had no oil? They ran off, friends. They were so desperate. They were so desperate. They, first they said, "Come, give us some of the oil. To their other friends, they said, give us some of your oil. Because they saw they had, they had enough. And the other friends said, no, we, if we give you some, we won't have enough. To take us through the darkness. You need to go and get your own. It's a tragic story, friends. I think, for me, it's the most tragic story in the scriptures. It's so tragic, friends. They ran off into the town, desperate to get the oil. And when they came back, it was all finished. It was all gone. They were too late. They couldn't enter. They were lost in the darkness forever. Friends, that's a picture of the church. It's a picture of the church. Those saints who were ready and those saints who were complacent. Those saints who were like the Laodicean church. They thought they had everything. But they were blind, they were poor, they were naked, they were wretched. Friends, it is time. It is time. It is time for us to rise up and say, Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord, I repent. I repent. I fall down on my knees. I fall down on my face. I fall down into the dust of the earth. I rend my garments, I rip my garments. And I give you everything, Lord. I give you everything. I give you my family, I give you my children. I give you all of my excuses. I give you everything, Lord. And I ask you to come. I ask you to come with your fire and burn me. Burn me. Burn me. That I would become a hot vessel for you. Burning in this end time darkness. Light the fires again, Lord. Light the fires across this nation. Light the fires across the nations of the earth. Oh, Holy Spirit, that you would again, that you would again implant your power into the church 
and they would become a vibrant fire, a powerful, a powerful enemy against this evil on the earth today. Wake up, wake up, and Christ Jesus will shine on you. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio, sounds to energize your faith. Creating me a clean heart. Eternal Radio, sounds to energize your faith. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Friends, many years ago, I had a dream vision. It was a dream vision, friends, and it was as real as any waking moment. I got into an escalator. I found myself going into an escalator. This escalator kept going up and up and up and up. The doors opened and there was bright white light everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I stepped out and I was in heaven. And there was a throne. There was a cube-like throne and it was white. I couldn't see anything else. It was so white. Everything was so white. But Jesus was sitting on the throne with his white garments, completely emblazoned in light. And I just stood there in front of the throne and Jesus moved over and he ushered for me to come and sit down on the throne. And friends, I sat down on the throne. When I woke up, friends, when I woke up, I was mortified. I was in such a state because I felt like I had blasphemed against the Almighty One. How could me, how could me, a sinner, sit on the throne of God? I felt like I had done the most unpardonable sin. And I told my wife the dream and I wept. I remember where we were. I wept on my way to work. And I wept as I told her that I'd sat on the throne of God. But friends, this scripture in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, you see, friends, if we allow Jesus to come in, that's where we overcome. If we allow Jesus to come into that, into that, a hard heart, into that hard heart. Friends, many years ago, I had, a, I had a vision, I had an encounter with the Lord. It was so powerful. I found myself walking down this hallway. I was walking down this hallway. And at the end of the a hallway, there was this, it was a corridor. At the end of this corridor, there was these, the, this big door, very big door. And it hadn't been opened for years. There were cobwebs, but there were locks and bolts everywhere. And I stood there. I thought, how am I going to get in? How am I going to get in? And I spoke to someone about this dream. And the person said to me, well, just see if you can open the door. So friends, that vision continued later on. And there I was in front of those doors again. And I just lifted up my left arm. And I swept those cobwebs. And I swept those locks away like they were cobwebs. They fell to the ground and the door flung open and there was the throne room of God. There was the throne room, and I'll never forget it, friends, filled with gold. And I could see the back of the throne and I could see the back of Jesus' head above the throne. And the throne spun around. And as it did, all the gold just flew everywhere. And I ran into the arms of Christ. Friends, friends, the thing is, you see, we don't open the door. We don't open the door because I don't know why. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe we're afraid of what's going to happen next. Maybe we're too scared to actually give up our entire lives. 
But friends, it is the only way to overcome. It is the only way. There is no other way. Friends, we don't want to get into heaven just by the skin of our teeth. You know, it says, doesn't it, in, that, in the scriptures, some escaped as if by fire. Friends, I don't want hell licking about my feet as I manage to scrape in. I want to go gloriously into the kingdom, gloriously into the kingdom and lay my crown before the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus says to us today, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. Friends, he wants to come and have a meal together with us. He wants to have a conversation with us. Friends, there's nothing like this communion. There's nothing like it, friends. There is nothing like this friendship. There is nothing like this relationship with the Lord God Almighty. But you see, all the while that we believe we have everything, all the while that we believe we are rich, that we are wealthy and that we're in need of nothing, we will never get into that place of deep communion with Jesus Christ. Friends, he wants us to follow him. He wants us to follow him even to the death. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus died for us, friends. Couldn't we die for him? Certainly, friends, we need to die daily. Certainly, we need to die daily and to put to death that evil flesh that so wants to rise its ugly head at any given moment. Friends, shall we lay before the throne room today? Shall we lay before the throne room today? Shall we boldly approach the throne of grace today? Shall we lay everything down? Shall we lay everything down? Shall we repent of our sinful condition? Shall we say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. The Lord is saying, he who has an ear, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, friends. Jesus is speaking to the lukewarm church today. He's speaking to you and he's speaking to me. And he's saying, wake up. Come on, wake up. Friends, and he, he loves us. You know, he loves us. That's why he rebukes us. So he says, come on, be zealous. Be zealous and repent. Repent of your sin. Repent of the evil. Friends, if we could only see how evil the sin is within us. Oh, let us reject that sin right now and let us boldly approach the throne and let the blood of Christ so wash us away. Wash that sin away. Oh, cleansing flood. Hallelujah. Friends, Jesus is coming. He's coming back. But friends, we could die today. We could die today. Sickness, accident, whatever it might be, old age. We could die today, friends, and we could be standing before the throne. And friends, I don't want to be standing before the Lord saying, I'm so sorry, God, I failed. I failed. I don't want to fail before the Lord. Friends, it is time for us to do this now, to repent while we can, while we still have breath in these bodies and rise up as a mighty army, as a mighty army to go throughout this land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Friends, I need your help to continue broadcasting End Time Hour on Eternal Radio. We are now living in the age that has allowed for a Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Revelation 13, 14, for he deceived all the people who belong to this world. Now, more than ever before, it is vital that we keep truth broadcasting around the planet. I'm simply asking you today to work with us in this great commission by texting ELCM02 
followed by the amount you would like to donate. For example, ELCM02 £10 and simply sending that to the number 70070, that's 70070, to donate to Eternal Radio to make an impact today. God bless you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Oh, friends, Jesus is calling out to you and to me. He is knocking on the door of our hearts. He is knocking on the door of our hearts and he is knocking ever so loudly. The time is running out and there will come a day when Jesus won't be able to knock on that door any longer. Friends, knocking on that door means to open up the door to welcome Jesus in fully and wholeheartedly to say, come in Jesus, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my life, Lord Jesus. Welcoming Jesus in to our lives means to say, my life is over, that my life is dead and that I want to live my life solely for you, Lord Jesus. But welcoming Jesus into our lives, into our hearts and opening up that door is to start a new and a fresh and a revelatory relationship with the Son of God. Oh, hallelujah. Just like Jesus had with the Father. Do you remember? He only did what he saw the Father doing. He only did what he saw the Father doing. Friends, friends, Jesus wants us to get into relationship with him so that we only do what we see the Father doing. So that we can have a relationship like Jesus had a relationship with the Father so that we can go away to a quiet place and have communion together. Friends, when Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, friends, I think we've somehow that's become such a religious statement. Do you understand what he's saying? He's saying this is the opportunity, and he's talking to Christians, friends. He's not talking to the unbeliever. He's talking to Christians. He's saying, Open the door, and I'll come in. I'll come in and we will have a meal together. We will have a relationship together. We will have a conversation together. We will talk together. We will share with each other the things of the kingdom. He, he's saying, you share with me your heart and I will share my heart with you. And friends, what a heart the Lord Jesus has to give to you right now. Friends, it's that opening up of the door. It's that welcoming of Jesus in. It's that real relationship with him that makes us overcomers. And, and friends, and when we overcome, when we overcome, he says he grants us to sit with him on his throne as he also overcame. Friends, Jesus is offering us the same overcoming life that he had when he overcame on that cross. Oh, hallelujah. Friends, it just sounds like it's too much to cope with, too much to bear, that we would be given such a position. This, my friends, this is what Jesus died for. This is what Jesus died for, to save his sons and daughters, to not only save them, to elevate them to this place, to this position, because he loves us so. We are brothers and sisters. We are grafted into the kingdom we have been brought back into fellowship brought back into fellowship as though we had never sinned <laughs> friends this is the glorious hope that we have friends it's time to open up the door it's time to open up the door friends a few days ago and you might find this strange but a few days ago friends i was i was there with my wife and on the coffee table there was my my mobile phone and I don't really know what what uh, it, it inspired me to do this but I just 
picked up my phone and mimicked as though I was calling heaven. And I put it to my ear. And I said, earth to heaven, earth to heaven, naked, poor and blind I come. And I put the phone down onto the table. Immediately, friends, immediately. I wasn't expecting this to be a prayer, but it was a prayer that was coming out of my heart. In that moment, I was calling out to the Lord. And it was like he said, don't you dare. Don't you dare. You're not naked, you're not poor, you're not blind. And in that instant, friend, in that instant, I saw a golden crown and a robe hanging up for me in heaven. And Jesus said, put these on. Put these on. These are for you. These are for you, purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And friends, that moment reminded me of that time in uh in, in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 3. And it's a very interesting scripture. And it reads this. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Friends, we have an opposer. Somebody who is opposing us. Somebody who is standing in front of that door. Yes, friends, it can be our own fleshly desires, but many times it can be Satan opposing us. He is the accuser of the brethren and he can be standing there to oppose us. Anyway, it goes on and it says, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire, friend? We are brands, aren't we? We are brands plucked from the fire. Hallelujah. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the Lord. Remember what it says in Revelation? Naked, poor and blind. What I said on that phone to the Lord. I said, naked and poor and blind, I come. There was Joshua, clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Oh, hallelujah. Friends, friends, this is what the Lord has done for you and for me, for you and for me. But friends, we have to open up that door. Friends, we need to take that oil of the Holy Spirit and we need to be filled to overflowing. We need enough oil, friends, not just for today, but to take us through the end time darkness. Oh, friends, these are the days. These are the days that the prophets of old wanted to see in their own time. We are living in those days. We are living in those days, friends. The atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere is changing. Friends, like I said earlier, when I was walking along the harbour in the town that I used to live and I suddenly had that sudden expectation the atmosphere changed and it was the Lord it was the Lord he was coming back in all of his glory and if I felt in that moment maybe he could have come in that instant and we would have all been taken up to meet the Lord in the air friends that day is coming and we need to be ready the signs are everywhere the signs are everywhere the Lord is graciously showing us He's graciously saying, come on, repent, repent, open the door. Oh, friends, but it's not just us, is it? It's not just the church. It's not just the lukewarm church. It's not just the sleeping church. It's not just the sleeping giant that needs to be awakened. Friends, there are countless millions out there who need to know the saving news of Jesus Christ. They need to be saved from their wickedness. They need to be saved from their sins. Oh, friends, we don't want it to be like in the days of Noah, do we? When there was just an ark for a small family. Friends, we want that ark to be full. 
full, full of the people who are currently in disobedience and wickedness running about the earth. Friends, it is our responsibility. It is our responsibility, friends. But how can we bring others in if we ourselves are not fully in? If we're sitting on the fence and we think we've got it all when we don't have it? Friends, it is time for us to go deeper with the Master. Deeper with Jesus. To say, Lord, I give you my everything. I give you my everything, friends. It is time for us to wrestle with the Lord like Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night long. And he said, I won't let you go. I won't let you go until you bless me. In other words, I won't let you go until, until there is a breakthrough. Until there is a breakthrough. And Jacob, friends, he walked with a limp for the rest of his days. Oh, friends, I want to walk with a limp. I want to walk with a reminder that the Lord came in and impacted my heart so strong that I'm prepared to live my all and I'm prepared to die. That every day I wake up and I've got a memory of the time that Jesus entered into my life so powerfully. Friends, it is time for us to stop sitting on the fence and it's time for us to throw ourselves fully into the kingdom, fully into Jesus. Oh friend, do you want to have a revelation of Jesus Christ? Do you want to have a revelation of Jesus Christ? Friends, the apostle John, while imprisoned on the island of Patmos, he had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, friends. His revelation of Jesus Christ caused John to collapse on the floor as though he was a dead man. That is the awesomeness of Jesus Christ. That is the awesome, holy presence of Jesus Christ. Oh, friends, Jesus had to bend down and touch John as he lay there as though he was dead and say, John, do not be afraid. Wouldn't you like Jesus to touch you today? Well, friends, we have an opportunity and all we need to do is Open that door. Hallelujah. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. Well, friends, it's been a bit of a different end time hour this week, hasn't it? And I hope that's been okay for you, friends. But I just needed to share with you what was on my heart, what God had put on my heart for this week, friends. And I know that was a little bit different. But friends, just to end, I want to read some passages from Revelation chapter 1. I'll start from verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. Friends, he's coming on the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him, friends. That means right back in the day, every tribe will see him. And for the first time, friends, in history, all of the nations of the earth will have a revelation and an understanding of what has happened. And they will mourn. Hallelujah. Friends, it goes on. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Friends, John was in prison. He was imprisoned on the island of Patmos because he didn't compromise in his faith and he stood up and he preached Jesus' word fully. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches. Friends, Jesus Christ's voice is not like it was when he walked the earth. Now it is as of a trumpet blast. It is as of a trumpet blast and he is speaking to the churches today. He continues to talk to the church today. He's speaking to the churches including the Laodicean church and the church that is sleeping. Friends, he is talking to the church that is sleeping and he's also talking to the church that is lukewarm and he's saying, come on, be either hot or cold. Be either hot or cold. Oh, friends, but really friends, he wants us to be hot. He wants us to be hot, but not lukewarm. 
not lukewarm. It then says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. That reminds me, friends, in the book of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the flames because of their tribulation, and one like the Son of Man appeared, it says. Friends, it says that Jesus' head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. Can you imagine it? His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun, shining in all of its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Friends, wouldn't you fall at Jesus' feet if he appeared to you in all of his glory? Wouldn't you fall at his feet as though dead? I know that I would, friends. I know that I would. Friends, Jesus wants to give us a revelation and we just need to open that door today and he will come in all of his glory, friends, and he will change our lives forever. He will change our lives forever. Then it says, But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death, friends. Where, O death, is your sting? Death has been defeated by Jesus Christ our Lord. He has the keys. Hallelujah. Then it says, Write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. Friends, it is time to have a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time to open that door. It is time to awaken, friends. It is time to shake off the dust. It is time to be hot for Jesus Christ in these last days. Friends, shall we open the door? Friends, he wants to give us a revelation. He wants us, he wants us to have a revelation, a glorious revelation of himself. Friends, and you don't need to be afraid. If it's fear that's stopping you, you don't need to be afraid because remember, Jesus will bend down and he will put his hand upon your shoulder and he will say, do not be afraid. Oh friends, Jesus is so longing to spend time with us, to be with us, that we would become the disciples that he has called us to be. And that at the end of this time, he will say, at the end of this time, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Friends, don't you want to hear those words of Jesus? I want to hear those words. I want to hear those words of Jesus. Friends, I don't want to be like one who has escaped the flames. I want Jesus to welcome me in and I want to have my crown to lay down before him. Friends, there is a world out there that needs saving. There is a world out there that needs saving from its sin. So shall we go, friends? Shall we go with the Lord right now? Oh, hallelujah. Shall we pray together right now? Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here right with us now. You are here in this place, wherever we are, in the living room, in the car, in the bedroom, in the office, wherever we are, you are here with us. I want to thank you right now, Father, that you are calling out to each and every one of us. And Father God, I pray right now that you would enable us to open up the door, that we would welcome you into our hearts, into our hearts, and Lord, that you would give us a glorious revelation and that we would walk into a new and lasting relationship with you. Oh Jesus, I pray for my friends out there. I pray, Lord, for the saints of God out there who are needing a touch from you. I pray, Father, for all those who are burdened by sin. I pray, Father, for all of those who are burdened by ill health. I pray, Father, for all those who are burdened by family situations and problems. Father God, I pray for all those who need to have a reconciliation. I pray for all those who are hurt, Lord, that are in need of a touch today. Father God, I pray right now though, Father, that beyond all of these circumstances, Father, that we would open the door, that we would put that as a priority in our life over everything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, friends. God bless you. And I'll be back with you again next week. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.
the preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.